Hey, all you really wild animals out there. Have you ever wondered what snack to serve a soaring sea eagle? How does an orangutan learn to hang? What wild wanderer whistles through its whiskers? Is a panda really as cuddly as it looks? And why does this guy have such a big nose? Well, the answers are all ahead, so let's dive right in. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. <laughs> <laughs> Adventures in Asia! All right! What's up? It's me, Spin, your global guide, here to take you on a journey through a land of mystery and legend, Asia. From the sand and sun of the Arabian desert, to the snow and ice of the Himalaya, to the tropical islands of Indonesia, Asia will amaze you. This huge ancient land of mythical tales is full of creatures so strange, so fantastic, so magical, you'd think they stepped right out of a storybook. But they're real. Of all the continents on Earth, Asia is the biggest. It covers nearly this whole side of me, also known as the Eastern Hemisphere. Have a look. From the Arabian Peninsula and the Ural Mountains in the west, to Japan and China in the east, even these islands way down in the South China Sea. All of this is Asia. Hmm. With so far to travel, even a global guy like me needs a little help. Hmm. Where can a planet get a taxi around here? Oh, yes! Flying carpet! Yo! Over here! <whistles> what better way to see the sights of ancient Asia? Right, Rog? Let's roam! Woohoo! First stop, Tiger Island in the South China Sea. 
in the island of the snakes. They come from miles around. By some mysterious signal, they all know it's time to meet. As night falls, they're getting closer. Scads and scads of slithering sea serpents. Oh no, not that kind of sea serpent. These are sea snakes, some of the most poisonous reptiles on Earth. And when they come ashore, the local residents give them plenty of slinking space. Hmm. They are here for a special date to find a mate. All night long, they slither and slide over the island, but only a few will succeed and find a night of romance with a venomous valentine. By morning, all the snakes, lovers and losers alike, have disappeared from sight. Except for this late morning Romeo. <laughs> Better get your watch fixed, pal. He's back in the water, but he's not out of danger. The snake has been spotted by his ancient enemy. The white-bellied sea eagle. He dives for cover. But even a sea snake has to come up for air sometime. The eagle misses, and our friend goes free. But there's always another snake in the sea. This snake won't give up without a fight. He tries to sink his deadly fangs into the eagle's leg. But he misses. Looks like a snake's supper. The eagle doesn't hunt for fun. He has little eagle mouths to feed. And like any good parent, he brings home the bacon, uh, the snake, for his brood. But their quiet meal is interrupted by an intruder. Another male sea eagle. Hey, he's fishing in their territory. Hey. Mom, dive bombs the unwelcome visitor. But it doesn't scare him off. So Dad challenges the other male to the age-old battle of sea eagle strength. It's called whirling. He takes to the sky with his opponent. They lock talons, and down they go! Look out, you're going to crash! Whoa! What a performance. Let's watch it again. Wow! The intruder decides to look for a safer place to fish, and the winner takes a victory flight. It takes a lot of effort to defend a territory, and it can be dangerous. Why go to all the trouble? Here's why. To make sure you have a safe place to raise your family and enough food for all the kids. I'm tired of hanging around the nest. How about a winter vacation? Your vacation dreams come true at Club Macaque. Are you stressed out? Can't keep track of the kids? Do you find yourself running around in circles? Then it's time to come on down to Club Macaque in the lovely mountains of Jigo Kudani, Japan. Soak in the simmering natural hot springs, relax with friends, and let our trained staff <laughs> give you a soothing facial. For centuries, Japanese macaques like these, also known as snow monkeys, have soaked in hot pools to escape winter's chill. What a great way to warm up. And you can join Club Macaque today. 
uh, as long as you're a Japanese macaque and you already have to live around here. So come on down. You'll always come back to Club Macaque. On the island of Borneo, you'll find another of Asia's hairy inhabitants. The male proboscis monkey. His name means nose, and take a wild guess why. That is a handsome face. The proboscis monkey is pretty mild-mannered most of the time. He leads his family, noses and all, in search of the tastiest mangrove leaves. But appearances can be deceiving. <laughs> that big belly, for example. This monkey isn't overweight, he just has an extra big stomach to hold all those mangrove leaves he eats. And that big nose. It may look funny to you, but to this crew it shows a male monkey's maturity. The guy's nose gets bigger as he gets older. The female stays small and upturned. That's the quickest way to tell a boy proboscis from a girl proboscis. That nose is also a built-in warning horn. When a bunch of other male monkeys tries to move in on the family territory, Dad becomes Super Schnoz! Louder than a burglar alarm, faster than a speeding caterpillar, able to leap between branches in a single uh, 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 bound. Leaping into action, Super Schnoz fends off the other males. Triumphant. Dad settles down for a well-deserved rest. But there's more action elsewhere on Borneo. Meet the roughest, toughest fish ever to crawl over land. The mud skipper. It's a mud patch, a grudge match, the battle of the big mouths. Each male mud skipper is out to defend his own patch of gloop. Once again, it's the age-old battle for territory. They're squaring off. And, ooh, ooh, skinny, ugly kids, you better send your parents out of the room. What's over here? Fiddler crab fissy cuffs? With its one huge claw, the male fiddler crab packs a powerful punch. And that big mitt helps him show off for female fiddlers. Ah, oh, yes. Ooh, ooh, Bruno has the crusher on the run. It's over. It's just a fact of life for a lot of animals. If you want enough food for yourself and your family, you've got to have a territory, and sometimes you have to fight for it. Okay, carpet, time for a little Indian adventure. Oops, not Indianapolis, wrong continent. Ah, much better, thanks, India. The huge country at the heart of Southern Asia. Did you hear that whistling? Is it a bird? Is it a gym teacher? Nope, it's a dog. 
Actually, it's a doll, also called the Whistling Dog of Asia. They may look like your pet pooch, but they're really wild dogs that live in groups called packs. And while you might whistle for your dog, dolls whistle for themselves. That's how they communicate. Other animals clear out for dolls because they're fierce hunters. But even a hungry doll patrol backs off when a herd of Asian elephants comes around. When you're 12 feet tall, everyone gives you your space. Most of the year, the elephant moms and kids hang out together while the males stay on their own. But now it's the mating season and a big male called a bull has claimed this herd. Another male challenges and the heavyweights clash. That's about 10 tons of male elephant combined, as heavy as six minivans. Looks like the challengers had enough. Meanwhile, the dolls regroup. With all this commotion, they decide to take the scenic route back to their den. Not only do they whistle, but they're pretty good at the doggy paddle, too. <laughs> These pups are just over a month old. All the pack members help out with puppy sitting to give mum a break. The pups stay busy nibbling branches and brothers <laughs> and chewing on grown-ups' tails and ears. <laughs> so little time and so much to bite. But for the adults, it's not all fun and frolic. That sounds the alarm. Tiger on the prowl. Time to move the puppies to a safer neighborhood. Yet another den. But the dolls don't have much to worry about from this tiger. She's got her own problems. Yes, with a male who's hunting on her territory. Male and female tigers almost never live together. Mom tigers raise their cubs alone. These guys may not look like little babies, but it will be a few more months before they're ready to live on their own as solitary predators. What's a predator? An animal who hunts other animals for food. Why do you think this male tiger is chasing these samba deer? Not for a game of tag. This time, the samba gets away. But soon the tiger will find a slow-moving supper. Meanwhile, back in the elephant herd, this toddler needs some walking lessons. And hey, what's a mom for? All this teaching will tire you out. Ah, nap time. Well, rise and shine, everyone. It's bath time at the all-natural outdoor jacuzzi, also known as the local Riverside. And don't forget to wash behind your ears. When they get into the water, elephants are like a bunch of big kids. All that playing around helps strengthen their family bonds, not to mention their trunk muscles. That's right, playing isn't just for fun. Let the games begin.
It's time for Asia's favorite game show, Actual Animals and Mythical Monsters. And here's your host with an attitude, Larry Latitude. Hingle, hingle. Ah, question number one. Is there such a thing as a real, live dragon? <laughs> Wrong. Ooh. You think this dragon doesn't exist? Tell it to this guy. The Komodo dragon lives only on a few remote islands in Indonesia. This big beast can be 10 feet long and weigh more than 300 pounds. Don't worry, he's not breathing fire. That's his tongue. There's a knight in shining armor when you need one, right? No points for you. Question number two. What reptile is an Indian snake charmer's partner? Right, a cobra. Oh. Ten points for you. This snake packs enough poison to kill a person with a single bite. The cobra is not really dancing. He actually can't hear music. She's just following the snake charmer's flute, ready to bite it if it comes too close. That snake charmer better keep his distance. Who okay. cares? Time for your final question. What animal inspired the legend of the unicorn? You're out of time. It's the Arabian Oryx. It takes a bit of imagination. Okay, maybe a lot of imagination. From the side, the Oryx seems to have just one horn. Voila! The unicorn! Okay, so it's not a unicorn, but the Arabian oryx is a pretty amazing animal in its own right. It can go for more than a year without a drink. It gets all the water it needs from the plants it eats. So it's right at home in the scorching desert sands of the Arabian Peninsula. What's a peninsula? A piece of land that juts out into the water. Here, the temperatures can get higher than 120 degrees. And uh, bring your own water, because you won't find any in this place. Here's another gang of tough desert dwellers, the Ibex. The males knock heads to impress the females. <laughs> don't try this at home, folks. We don't have horns and a super thick skull like these guys. The winner gets the female, and he gets to become a dad to these kids, which are called, um, uh, kids. While we're in the desert, let's have a word from our sponsor. Looking to drive the desert dunes? Well, look no farther than the Camel Coop, the legendary ship of the desert. For thousands of yards, the camel has been the last word in desert transportation. Its four-hoof drive, designed for extra traction, can take on the toughest, tallest piles of sand. This beauty of a beast gets 100 miles per gallon of water, that is, and it's loaded with standard features like this hump. It's not filled with water like you thought, folks. That's fatty tissue in there. It provides extra energy for the camel and a comfy seat for you. <laughs> Test drive the new Camel Coupe, available now in every shade of beige. Whew! Camels can take the desert heat, but me? I'm steaming. Let's go for a swim. Ah, yes. A refreshing dip in the Red Sea. Right off the Arabian coast. Hmm. I feel cooler already. And speaking of cool, some of the coolest creatures in creation cruise these waters. This may look like a garden of plants, but look again. It's a garden of eels. Garden eels, to be exact. Eels may look like snakes, but they're actually a special kind of fish. These garden eels feed on tiny animals called plankton that float in the water. The sandy sea floor gives the eels a handy place to hide. When danger threatens, they slip into their burrows, tails first. 
Then, when the coast is clear, they're up for more plankton. Better not eat too much, or you won't fit back into that burrow. Not far away, two very different creatures live and work together. The shrimp has bad eyesight, but great housekeeping skills, and the goby's job is to keep his big eyes peeled for danger. Back in the burrow, shrimpy, your trusty goby guard's been startled by something overhead. Like a manta ray, maybe? These huge fish can grow larger than a car, up to 20 feet wide and 15 feet from his head to his pointy tail. But their food is pint-sized. All they eat are small fish and plankton, those same tiny animals that the garden eels like to gobble up. Always moving, manta rays use their huge fins to get around. Like Gigantic birds of the sea, they fly gracefully through the water. And speaking of flying, where's my pal? Now, that's what I call service. Come on, carpet. Let's check out China. Long ago, visitors to China brought back tales of a big, cuddly, black and white bear with a taste for bamboo. And this is the guy they were gossiping about, the giant panda. In the Cuteness Olympics, the panda is the all-time worldwide champion. No wonder he is a favorite of the Chinese people. He's very charming, very slow, and has a very big appetite. Most bears eat almost anything, but these guys have a very limited diet. In fact, bamboo is practically the only thing they eat. And they munch it practically round the clock. Might as well get uh, comfy while you're snacking. <laughs> Cute as they look, pandas aren't really very friendly. They prefer to eat alone and drink alone and sleep alone and walk alone and live alone and... Well, y you get the idea. Except for one special time during the year when the panda's attitude changes. Why? You guessed it, mating season! It's true all over Asia and all over the world. Love is in the air, and we all know that love makes you act weird. We'll be back with more panda passion in a minute after this important message. You've mastered the monkey, gyrated to the jitterbug, and flipped for the funky chicken. Now get ready for the dance craze that's sweeping the continent. The crane! No one can strut like these Japanese cranes. Actually, the dance that these birds do helps them find lifelong partners. Unlike many creatures in the animal world, cranes stay together for life. Of course, the problem is finding the right partner, hopefully one with feathers. And now, back to our program. When we last left the pandas, love was in the air. This male, in fact, is on the lookout for a mate. Um, uh, Try the left foot over the right foot. No, 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 I think you're going about this the wrong way. This panda needs a push. Ups a daisy! Uh, there! Finally, he makes it to the top and sends out a love call. He's in luck. Here's an interested female. This is the one time when a panda really acts like a big teddy bear. After a few days, the pandas go their separate ways. And five months later, when the female gives birth to a cub, she'll raise it on her own. Mom and baby live inside this hollow tree trunk for up to five months, where she occasionally mistakes him for a popsicle. This baby panda is important, not just because he's cute, but because pandas are among the most endangered animals on Earth. There are fewer and fewer being born, and soon there may be none left at all.
The problem is that more and more people are moving into their forest homes. So the pandas have less and less space in which to live. You see, Asia's not just big, it's got lots of people. In fact, more than half the population of the entire world, that's me, lives here. And human families need territory too. When so many humans and so many animals live in the same space, they're bound to cross each other's paths. Hey, let's cruise this carpet back to Borneo. Deep in caves on the island of Borneo, live tiny birds called swiftlets. Although a better name for them might be spitlets, because to make their nests, they actually use their own saliva or spit. For some humans, these nests of hardened saliva are worth their weight in gold. The cave climbers collect the nests and sell them as the main ingredient in a food called bird's nest soup. You might prefer a chicken noodle, but bird's nest soup is a popular special treat in some countries. It may seem mean to take the bird's nests, but most collectors try to gather them early in the nesting season before the birds lay their eggs. That way, they hope the swiftlets will have time to build another nest, lay their eggs, and raise the next generation. While we're in Borneo, let's visit another local legend. The orangutans! There's an ancient myth about these guys, too. Legend has it they're actually people, very hairy people, who chose not to talk so they wouldn't have to work. No, orangutans aren't people, but they've definitely got a quality lifestyle. Hanging out in the trees, swinging from vine to vine, eating fruits and leaves most of the day, and uh, look at those arms. That's serious physical fitness. This guy's big cheeks aren't full of food. They grow like this to make him seem cuter to females and tougher to other males. And when night falls, ta-da! Pull down a few branches and it's an instant sleeping nest. Mom orangs and their babies usually stay together for about seven years until the youngsters are old enough to care for themselves. But some baby orangs are taken from their moms by people who want to sell them as pets. That's one of the reasons they've become endangered. This little guy may look like he's being kidnapped, but he's actually being saved from the ape snatchers. These scientists will keep him at a special camp in southern Borneo and try to teach him and other orphan orangs the skills they'll need to survive in the wild. Skills like good hygiene, carpentry, <laughs> and neatness. Hey, come back with that laundry. But trust me, when these apes aren't getting into trouble, they're learning to do what orangs do best. Be wild. Because they aren't really humans. They are really wild animals. And that is how they ought to live. Being wild in Asia can mean so many different things because across this vast continent, there are so many different places to live. And no matter where you find them, from the Arabian Peninsula to the tropical islands of Indonesia to the snowy reaches of Siberia, these animals have all found their own amazing ways to survive. It's no surprise that there are so many surprises on the Earth's biggest continent, Asia. We're looking down from the snow
Well, gang, it's been a great adventure discovering the mysteries of Asia with you. <laughs> oh, and special thanks to my air taxi and all-around amigo, the carpet. Thanks, buddy. Long may you hover. There are lots more really wild animals all across this wonderful world of ours. So be sure to join me on our next adventure. Until then, this is your pal Spin. Spin you later.